What it is, what it do, what it is, lads and ladettes. The Grizz is back, and I got a little bit of news for you. Jumping right into it, it appears Starlink has sold okay so far. Haven't heard anything really negative about it, but the good news is that 80% of it was purchased on the Nintendo Switch. And I don't understand how this doesn't make sense. And I also don't understand how this wasn't a Nintendo exclusive game. But, you know, you want to appeal to a larger crowd. But here's what I'm, I am hoping. I'm not saying I hope that the game doesn't sell on other systems. I hope the game sells well enough for a sequel to be made. And a sequel to be basically only on the Nintendo Switch. And this way you can maybe give us more Nintendo characters or more star, like a Star Fox thing. Or maybe make actually have this studio make a Star Fox game directly. And maybe they can feature some other guest characters or whatever. But this game, I've been playing it. I'm about 10 or so hours in. I'm actually enjoying it. I'm actually kind of almost done. 10 to 15 hours, I want to say. I feel like I'm close to being done. And I'm really enjoying the game. And I think that they can make a quality Star Fox game. They give a change a few things. But I think it's a really good game. And I'm trying to finish it because we are coming up on this Friday, Diablo 3 is being ported to Nintendo Switch. And given the fact that it's such a grindy game and it's getting ready to be on a Nintendo Switch, I can now finally finish finish the game and then do some looting if I want to do. Do some grinding and pick up some um, other things. And speaking of Diablo, the reviews are out and it's been doing fairly well. I've seen nothing below a 9 so far. And that lets me know that it's doing pretty well. Of course, when you're playing portable, it takes a bit of a graphical hit. But the game, it, it, it just functions pretty well. Even when you're on screen, a lot of people said that they didn't see any issues uh, different than when people was uh, also playing with them couch co-op. So this excites me. I'll probably mostly be playing by myself. But anybody that wants to pop in and jump in, they are more than welcome. And I'm, I'm happy to not see any slowdown. And so, yeah, that's... Uh... Oh, you know what? Xbox Live Games with Gold for November has been released today. The, not the games, of course, but the games that have come on. So I want to say they for Xbox 360 front, we're getting the first Assassin's Creed, which is, I don't know how many of us want to replay it, but, you know, this is what launched such a huge, huge franchise that was coming out annually for a while. And, you know, it took a little break, uh, maybe two years ago. But if you want to see what started all, started it all, you get you get a, uh, free access to Assassin's Creed for as long as you have Xbox Live Gold. We know how this goes. And then we also received Dante's Inferno. Uh, um, uh, basically, based off of the poet, poetry of Dante's Inferno, he goes through the, the rings of hell. And it's a Devil May Cry-like game, Bayonetta-style game. I remember trying my best to play that game back in the day. That game was pretty freaking hard. I quit halfway through the game. I didn't quit because I just lost interest. I quit because it was hard. I was having a rough time. But I also will say this, that that game was actually pretty, pretty amazing. I had a lot of blast with it when I wasn't getting my butt kicked. And it was a really good game. And that's what you're getting for Xbox 360 in November. For the Xbox One, you get the game Race the Sun. I'm guessing it's a racing simulator, artsy style. That's what it seems like. You know, just basically flying. Nothing too fancy. But the headliner for Xbox One, or in general of games with Golden November, is Battlefield 1. Now, I haven't really been a big Battlefield or Call of Duty fan in the latest of years, but um, I was actually thinking about buying Battlefield 1 recently when it was on the PS4 and it was for sale, but for some reason I just said, nah, I'm not going to get it. I am probably not going to play it for a good while. But here we are, we're getting it free if you want to call it that, free on Xbox Live Gold for November. So maybe I'll try to run through the campaign and finally get a chance to see it. Um, I'm not getting Battlefield 5 before anyone asks. Sorry to disappoint you. But, you know, if it's ever free, I'm down for it. So that's it for the uh, minor news, some of the quick news out of the way. It's something a little bit bigger that I want to go over with. So... About a day or so ago, the PlayStation 1 Classic list was released for both Japan and for the West. And, man, this is a, this is a doozy. Uh, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to read off the list for, you know, for us North Americans, you know, West. So here's the list. And here it's pretty interesting list, I want to say the least. Okay, so over here we get, we get... Battle Arena Tushinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy 7, 
that's been you know re-released dozens of times so uh why not the original grand theft auto didn't hear a lot about that until uh i believe n L the london one uh intelligent cube i remember that i mean i, did, I wasn't ready for that jumping flash metal gear solid absolutely we absolutely needed this game mr driller odd world abe's odyssey the original rayman resident evil director's cut revelations persona I didn't, I'm not even a, like a Persona fan. I didn't know that there was Persona games all the way back then. I think maybe Persona dates before. I'm, I'm not sure. Get, we'll get into that. Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, the first Twisted Metal, which is why I'm not sure they didn't put the second one in. That's really what established the franchise. And Wild Arms. Doesn't sound like a great, great list to me, honestly. We're not going to put on Crash and Spyro because those are being remade and re-released. You don't want to compete against your own products, right? So I'm not I'm not 100% in love with this list. I'm actually not planning on getting this. This is for $100. This isn't, it's not worth it to $400 for me. I, I'm not really too excited about this. Now, the funny thing is, as far as getting excited, you should see the Japanese list. This is This is quite interesting. Listen to this list. You have Ark the Lad, Ark the Lad 2, Biohazard Director's Cut, which is the first Resident Evil, Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 7 Internationals, Final Fantasy 7, G Darius, Gradius Gaiden, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Megami Ubonoraku <laughs> Persona, Be Your True Mind, that's Revelations Persona, I'm guessing, Metal Gear Solid, Mr. Driller, hear me out, Parasite Eve. Why wouldn't that be here? I don't know if there's any, some type of licensing issue or something like that, but that's quite confusing. I mean, if it's in, a, if it's in you know, over there in the east, why can't it come here? I don't know. Uh, Ridge Racer, Type 4. Saga Frontier. Super Puzzle Fighter. Tekken 3. Toshinding. I'm guessing that's Battle Arena Toshinding. Wild Arms in 11. Psy. I'm not 100% sure what that game is, but... Parasite Eve, uh, what else? Saga Frontier, G Darius, Gradius, Gaiden, Almond Core. I mean, come on, man. It's just we 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 deserve that. I, I don't understand. Does PlayStation not feel like we are deserving? That's very. I'm very curious about that, to say the least. That's wow, wow. I mean, some people might want to import, but I'm not sure if. I mean, if you can read kanji, if you can read in Japanese, fine. Or, be, you know, knock yourself out. I encourage it, absolutely. But theirs sounds a lot more interesting than the American version. That's, uh, that's, I'm not too big on that. I mean, you know, I hope the thing does sell well. But if we can get, like, something like a PS2 Classic, they can make different versions of it. They can give us a mixture of adventure games to the 3D platformers. Or they can just give us straight-up JRPGs on it. And they can make way more money because the PS2 was a haven for JRPGs. Uh, I'm talking Rogue Galaxy. Uh, okay. Oh, the Hack series. I'm not much of a JRPG. Harvest Moon. Okay, those are coming to mind. I was a big fan of the Musashi sequel here. Sam Samurai Legend. I own that game still on my PS2. But you can just give us a plethora of... Oh, even the original Odin Sphere. But they re-released that back on PS4. But... It was a haven for JRPGs on the PS2, and I think they can release just that. They can release shooters. That's when Killzone came out, came about. Uh, they it, whew, it just don't release the bouncer. I have that game, and that game is way worse than I remember. I fiend for that game. It was a launch title. I definitely remember that. I was in eighth grade. I played it then. I was like, oh, this is awesome, and I was mad because I beat it in like three hours. And then I recently started to play it. You know, maybe about a year ago, more recent. And I was like, wow, this is terrible. This is just awful. I don't remember this game being so bad. But, yeah, that's just just hopes and say, like, you know, this is just a wake up for them. And um, maybe we can get the same as Japan get if we ever get a PS2 Classic. And our final bit of news today. Just today, Nintendo announced that there will be a Smash Bros. Direct on Thursday, November 1st. I'm excited, but I'm not excited. I want to hear more stuff about something other than Smash. But I, what I, I understand is that... Even though we have a Pokemon coming this month, well, next month, because it's pretty much the end of October, um, in November, 
it's a Pokemon game, and, you know, that's not bigger than Smash, I'm guessing, because it's not the super core title. We're just getting a Pokemon game just to hold us over. And it looks fun, but it's just not for me. But Super Smash Bros. is the big tentpole game for the fall, for the winter, and it's going to sell millions. Obviously, everybody is a huge, most people are huge fans of Smash Bros. It's a party fighting game, so even if you suck at fighters, you might be able to get away, or if you could pull your weight around, but... I'm interested to see what's going on November 1st in the Smash Direct. There has been a leak. Uh, I'm not 100%. I'm not big on leaks and trying to find out everything. Um, but there's been some interesting leaks. Uh, that they were saying something in the mural that Little little Mac's arm was kind of cut off. So somebody was supposed to be there. And, you know, it's some wild, interesting stuff. It's really interesting. It's interesting to learn about. But I'm not the guy to come to for that. It's very interesting, though. But... I'm hoping that maybe we get some more characters. I'm excited to play the game. I got a lot of friends who's ready to play this game, and I'm gonna probably get my butt kicked, but I'm ready to. I'm ready for the challenge, you know, lads and ladettes. Um, I'm also hoping maybe they can sneak something else into this presentation. I want to hear about Metroid, but it appears that we may be waiting for the Game Awards out in December, and it's actually smashes the day at smashes the day after. So we're going to find out, you know, um, November 1st, we're going to find out about Smash. Hopefully we can get something else squeezed in there. But December 6th for the Game Awards, I'm hoping and praying that we can find something out about Metroid, Bayonetta 3. And we can finally, I'm not sure we got a release date for Damon X Machina. I'm excited for that. So yeah, lads and ladettes, thank you for watching. This has been a pretty short of video, quick news review. I had some time today and I was excited to do this and I just wanted to bring some of this to your attention. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below about the, the different versions of the PS1 classics. Give me a like, dislike if you don't like it, if you agree, you disagree, any traffic, just help me out a lot with the like, spread the word. I have all forms of social media, Patreon, whenever you're ready, when I start pushing out more content, just a dollar a month, any little bit helps. I thank you once again, lads and ladettes. This video is finito.